Now that your Servo Encoder Simulator has arrived, let me give you some important tips to save you some time. As far as the output goes, which is what we're going to spend a lot of time in this video, the Servo and Encoder Simulators are exactly the same. On the inputs, really, you just have to apply power to the Encoder Simulator, and then you're just going to use the one button for the fixed frequencies. At the end of the video, I'll give you some application examples that you can follow. On the servo simulator, you have your analog value, which is going to be minus 10 to plus 10, and that's how you're going to vary the frequency. And don't forget about your enable signal. And same as the encoder simulator, we're going to apply voltage to power it up. Now make sure you pay attention to what voltage is required for each one of them. Now let's talk about the output wiring or encoder wiring, because this is where a lot of confusion comes in. If you purchase one that has a differential line driver type outputs, then it's fairly straightforward. We're just going to use a 1769L27 as an example. We have A0+, plus, A0-, minus, B0+, plus, B0-, minus, Z0+, plus, Z0-, minus. and you simply take each wire directly from A0+, plus to A+, plus here, A0-, minus to A- minus here, and so forth. When it comes to the open collector devices, or when we're not actually doing the differential line driver, there's where I see more confusion come in because they are called A plus and A minus, but that has nothing to do with electrical positive and negative. It has to do with whenever A plus is turned on, A minus will be turned off and they're always alternating and it's part of the way that they check the voltage. This is an open collector input. That means it's gonna take positive voltage in the range of five to 24 volt and it's gonna sync it to the common through the module. When we get to this micro 850 wiring example, you see we get tremendously less information. And this is fairly common, unfortunately, on encoder connections. But again, we have an open collector encoder simulator. That means it's gonna take positive voltage from these inputs and it's going to sync them to the common or the minus 24 volt of your power supply. And on the Micro 850, if you're using high speed counter zero, and at the end of this video, I'll have a playlist that tells you exactly how to configure it. We're gonna use input zero for A, input one for B, and input two for Z. Now notice in that sentence, I did not say plus or minus. Mainly, if you use A plus, you have to use B plus. If you use A minus, you have to use B minus. The Z is actually going to depend on how your logic needs to be, and we're going to talk about that. Now, we know that we have an open collector encoder. We're connecting to it, so it's going to take it to the common or a minus 24 volt. And that means this COM0 right near needs to have plus 24 volt connected to it. And this is going to be the opposite of what you typically do for a button or something. But this will be what we call a sourcing input. So I'm going to go ahead and take plus 24 volt DC and put it on COM0. And while I'm at it, I'm going to take plus 24 volt to the plus 24 terminal of the EOC. Servo simulator would be the same way and my common to the minus 24 volt. That gets us powered up here, and we have our common now on our Micro 820. Now let's talk about this because your particular application is gonna determine what you're gonna do here. First, if you're simply simulating a flow meter or something that is just a pulsed counter, all you're gonna do is take A plus, and connect it to input zero. You don't need to worry about any of the other terminals. If we're connecting an encoder, then in addition to the A plus going to input zero, we're gonna take B plus and take it to input one. And finally, if your application requires a Z marker or it gets up one pulse per revolution to tell where on the rotation it is, then you're either gonna take Z plus or Z minus to, in this case, input two. Now, here is the important part about the open collectors or even the five volt differential line drivers when you're not using them in differential line driver mode is at no point in any of this 
should you have plus or minus 24 volt going directly to these terminals? They have to go through some type of load such as an input. All right, I'm powered back up and I can see my count working. But what I want you to do now is hit the frequency and bring it back over to 10. And one, if it's flashing slowly, it's forward. If we hit it again, it flashes a double flash. That is going to be reverse. And you hit it one more time and it's solid, it's not running. We're going to hit it one time and we're going to have it on 10 hertz and have it flashing. And here's a time to look at the actual PLC. Don't try to look at an HMI IO state or something because we want to make sure these are working before you move on to your program. I want you to look at your indicators and make sure that your input zero and input one or whatever your A and B mainly are connected to are flashing at that 10 hertz. Now, the Z one you probably won't see happening because it only happens once per revolution. But now, once that we know that we're good, now we can bump it up. And depending on your particular PLC, you may or may not see input 2 turn on. But there you go. You just saw input 2. And now we know all of our inputs are working properly, and you can go on and test your code. Right here is a playlist with some other helpful tips on the encoder and servo simulators, including how to configure this Micro 820 high-speed counter.